All right, yeah, yeah, yeah. What's up? It's your boy. It's BQ. It's the Impact Lounge. It's number one place to be for the Impact Wrestling fan. Sorry for dropping the review on you guys late this week. Monday is one thing when I drop it on you guys on Monday, but I know this is Tuesday morning. And uh had a good weekend with the family. Just one of those things. Um, things were planned, you know. It wasn't it wasn't work, nothing like that. Just just a family weekend. Uh you know, kind of took away from my ability to actually watch the show in a timely uh, manner, timely fashion, and uh, to do this review. So, you know, I still want to give you guys my thoughts. Going to try to do it, do it a little quicker because it's already impact and pop time here. Impact on pop. I'm sorry, I'm already thinking of the Patreon. Impact, impact on Access TV time here in a couple days. So uh, normally I'd give a longer plug, but I just want to do a reminder that there is a, a new Patreon at patreon.com backslash BQ Speaks. It is free for the month of March. I uh, just finished my reaction to Ty Valkyrie joining AEW. Uh, did the TNA on pop review. Uh, this is the episode where uh, I believe Matt Hardy had just won the world title. Um, if you've got Impact Plus, uh, they cut out the Bethlehem, Pennsylvania episodes. And then I think that the one that I reviewed was the very first one in the UK. And then obviously these uh, these podcasts, you can also catch there uh, at free streaming. So let's get into this episode real quick so we can just, you know, knock this out and uh, start preparing for impact later this week and because it's sacrifice week i don't typically review the episodes on those weeks um instead uh we'll be talking sacrifice so my sacrifice preview show and prediction show will be a, a patreon exclusive so you can check that out this week um but as far as the review show goes that's going to take the place of when i'm normally reviewing impact so we're going to get into this we're going to jump into this one time for your mind um we're going to start with BTI. There's a new gimmick with Raj Singh. He's Champagne Singh. Um, we don't see Raj. So this is a company who puts as many people on, on air as possible from week to week. And we do not see Raj Singh and Shira very often. It is extremely rare, it seems, that we see these guys, especially Shira. I mean, I guess they're always running together, but I just feel like we see Raj on screen a little bit more. You know, he wrestles Zicky Dice. This is not the type of match where people are going to tune in to BTI. And, that, you know, that's why I was saying I think we're at a point where BTI, instead of filling it up with a bunch of fluff, uh, I think we're at a point where we need to add another match to it. This, this is what I would do, honestly. So Sacrifice is coming up. I've been saying this to I'm blue in the face, that these monthly specials are too long uh you know it's one thing to say okay we want to do these monthly specials or impact plus for the ultimate insider da, 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 da. it don't need to be no three hours long it just doesn't i get fatigued every time watching these so i would run them uh two hours maybe two and i mean two and a half hours i just think three is a little long if you want to make it long do two and a half hours Record a couple more matches for BTI. Uh, you're going to have a hotter crowd, a larger crowd. It's going to look like a little bit of a bigger deal. And, uh, you know, you can build up that library from month to month of like, okay, we're, we're able to do an additional two, three BTI matches that we can factor in throughout the course of the month so that BTI can be an additional match. You can have one match that people care about, and then you can have champagne sing versus zicky dice as well you, you understand what i'm saying so because from week to week it's like sometimes they have this like cool match like okay i think i do want to tune in and then you have one where you're like what the fuck is this but you know we got to see sing get some wins every once in a while um zicky dice got a win a few weeks ago on bti so we got to see these things especially so we can see what these guys finishers are and what they're what they're trying to do like Taylor Wildstar building her new gimmick a little bit on BTI matches and then you know, no one was watching and then she just shows up on the episode um you know looking like my my aunt Wilda um you know so that's that's what I think they should do but uh she, Rush Singh uses a finisher here and I I couldn't even tell you if this was a new finisher 
because I've never seen him win a match. Uh, but it's called the Champagne Pop, which I kind of I kind of dig actually. Uh, I would say there's some similarities to uh, Allison K's AK-47, and then it almost seems like he flips them into a DDT. So I don't know if that's exactly where they're, what he's going with it, or if that's just how it looked. But I can dig the uh, champagne pop. Let's get into Mike Bailey and Jonathan Gresham versus Decay. Yeah, uh, and I'm always saying that the formula impact uh, it can be successful with is the bookend formula. Great opener. Great main event. That being said, this episode, folks, we are in a downtime right now with Impact. Impact is very much a roller coaster. You will get several months of great television. And then you're going to get like a month or so of really bad television. And it just goes up and down. I would say in 2022... It was pretty consistent. I think it was pretty consistent as far as being good, not as far, far as being bad. They seem to get away from a lot of the bad comedy. That was one of my predictions for 2022 when I when I did a podcast at the beginning of the year. I said, I think they're going to get away from some of the bad comedy. Um, it seemed like that in 2021, too, that they were starting to transition out of it. They were letting go some some people who were... More so like comedy characters on the roster. And we just we just weren't seeing a lot of it. Like 2022 was kind of the year of good matches. And a little bit like lacking on the creative side. But a lot of like really good wrestling. 2023 has kicked off. Lots of really horrendous backstage segments. It's like now when you watch the show. The wrestling is good. But everything else is very, very bad. And I, I'm shocked because we're, we're not getting so much Scott Dumore on TV, which I thought he was dragging a lot of the segments down. There's really no change. Like some of these backstage um, things that they do are horrible. The, the wrestling is great. It, it's, it's all this other stuff. And I, I've seen the opinion floated out there. Well, Scott... Scott moved up the chain, so he's not there to to control things. I I, I don't know how, how true that is because we don't know who's there day in, day out, who's really calling the shots at a taping. If Scott is there, if he's not there, obviously if, it's, if he's there, he's calling the shots. I, I don't know. I, either Either that is true. Or it's just his vision magnified even more. You know, I don't think we really know the answer to that. I just know that in between the matches, it is really bad. And when I did these impact on pop reviews, well, I've done one so far on the Patreon. I make a lot of comparisons to what they're doing right now. The whole point of kind of doing those podcasts was to see what was good back then? What was bad back then? Comparing it to now, are they getting away from things that worked? Uh, are they, you know, and they they are. <laughs> they did. They've, they've gone away from things that worked because I think their backstage segments for years were some of the best ones in wrestling. And now we get what we get. It took four minutes for this episode to start. And I don't care if you're just like, you are negative BQ, you suck. Um, I don't care, like, whatever, like, your opinion is of me. If you agree with me sometimes, don't agree with me, with me whatever. There's no way you, you can tell me with a straight face that it is beneficial to start your show about four minutes and 15 seconds into it giving all that time for someone to change the freaking channel because you want to show 50 highlights of C4 Spike. And then this week they played We Own the Night. It just felt like it took forever for the show to start. So all that rambling, all that being said, as much as I say the bookend formula works for them, it didn't work as much here because we're not kicking off with any action. We're ki kicking off with fluff, 
fluff, fluff, and then the match starts. I think it even started off with PCO Eddie yelling for Eddie Edwards. It seems like someone's either yelling for Eddie or Yeti. Eddie is <laughs> Yeti or Eddie is yelling from them. PCO. Anyway, it's Mike Bailey and Jonathan Gresham versus Decay. This was this was excellent. This was a great match. This was um Decay really um showed that they can go with some of the you know some of the workers on the roster. I think we always knew that Black Taurus, but you know, Crazy Steve continues to impress me. I really like Crazy St- Steve in the ring. Decay is on a roller coaster of their own. <laughs> to where things were, you know, I think they were, were they the champions at one point. I don't think they were the tag team champions, but they were winning matches. And then they, they started just losing everything and then built up again. They both got X division title shots and now we're back down again. So that's kind of what they do with this team. I never, 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 never agree with when you just pair two wrestlers up and they come in and beat an established tag team. Wrestling has been doing that for ever now. I wouldn't say forever, like 80s, 90s forever, but like that's been popular in the, just since the early 2000s. It's to put put guys together who maybe have teamed once or, or never and then beating a, a team. You know, so. But they're trying to build something here with Gresham and Bailey. And um, Gresham is looking jacked. He's looking really, really jacked. You know, I, I just, I would like to see more of him on my TV. And we just don't seem to get that. I don't know. But this this was a really good match. If there's anything to go out of your way to watch for this episode, this would be it. I, th- I thought it was, I thought it was excellent. And obviously, Mike Bailey and Jonathan Gresham get the win with this one. Um, Jim Miller interviews Josh Alexander, Rich Swan, and Frankie Kazarian backstage before before they face Time Machine at Sacrifice. I don't know if you guys agree with this. I think they have Josh Alexander in too many backstage segments. You know, I think when you're the world champion, I think you should be. Like, you should be part of the show, but you should always treat that person like an attraction a little bit. And he seems, they just seem to put him in interviews and and skits that are just made for the common wrestler. I, I just I just don't think the interviewer should just be backstage with, I mean, uh, the champion should just be backstage with the interviewer. You know, I think he should come most of his promos and video packages. Maybe come out to the ring. I just, I just, I don't know. Maybe, maybe that's me like looking too far into it. But I just don't think that that's like really beneficial. Steve Macklin walks up. I don't know if you guys caught this. It stood out immediately because he's in his wrestling gear. He's sweating profusely when he walks up. These fools recorded this segment after his match. And aired it before the match. You know what I'm saying? Because when you're walking around backstage. And you're you're taking parts in interviews. Like you have a shirt on. You have something on. This guy's just walking around his wrestling chunks. He's sweating. He's out of breath. I don't know why they did this. Like why couldn't they just move this segment to after his match? And I don't know if this is just a complete oversight. But and and maybe you guys didn't catch it. I I caught it. I mean, to me, immediately, I'm like, why doesn't he have a shirt on? And again, he's sweating. He's speaking. He's out of breath. And then he wrestles the match on TV. <laughs> oh gosh! But um, but Macklin is is, as I said, he's gonna he's gonna carry this feud, and he's uh, you know, they're 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 painting the picture that. Maglin is able to get in the mind of Josh Alexander and play mind games. I I don't I don't buy it, but Macklin is doing excellent work. He is uh, he, he he's going to he is going to carry this feud. Uh, then we get Josh or Gia Miller again. I was going to say Josh Matthews. I don't know why. Again, uh, talking with 
Giselle Shaw, Jai Vidal, and uh, Savan Evans. Swinger comes up, and they make the match for later in the night, where uh, Swinger is going to get his first his first victory versus Jai Vidal. Uh, and I thought that was funny that you know Giselle said, "Doesn't he know you're a wrestler?" So it was good that they actually, instead of doing the, he's a trained wrestler. Clearly, uh, we've seen him wrestle on the show. As a matter of fact. Uh, he wrestled Jonah one time, I believe. Instead of doing it and pretending we're fucking idiots, they actually, you know, well, he he is a wrestler, so I'm glad that they did that. I for mention Steve Macklin wrestles Heath. This is the match where <laughs> they recorded this segment after he was done with this match. He wrestles Heath, and I'm very much in agreement with the guys on Brace for Impact. Steve Macklin should be running through his opponents. I'm going to say this every time he gets in the ring because I, I totally agree with it. I believe in it. He should be whooping ass. These matches are entirely too competitive. We know he's going to win. It, they're, they're entirely too competitive. They're just, they're doing that AW bullshit where everything, every match is, um, you know, competitive, even the st- when the storyline asks for and not to be. Like Josh, Ma- Josh, uh, say Josh Alexander. I'm off, I'm off my game today. I'm sorry. John Moxley having this long ass match with the Evil Uno for what? You know, um, it's one of your guys at the top of the card. Steve Macklin should be kicking Heath's ass, but Steve Macklin does get the win. It's, it, it's your future world champion, folks. It's got to be. It's got to be. I, I'm just going to be absolutely furious if he doesn't win. He's going to add something much needed to this show at the top of the card. Uh, and then we start going really downhill here. And, and this is what I was saying at the top here. What's going on in between the lines, in between the matches, stinks right now with this company. And it is the Death Dolls. And they had their tight tag team title uh, match tonight, but they're concerned about Havoc or Jessica finding out that she's Havoc. I completely forgot she was Havoc. I, I don't say I don't completely for, I completely forgot. Obviously, I know she's Havoc, but they really kind of got, you know, got us into the Jessica thing, and it just seemed like okay, we're just gonna kind of roll with Jessica going forward because we got to freshen up the Havoc character. But they're teasing the spookiness and the father's James Mitchell and and you know they're obviously teasing Havoc coming back and these tag teams in the women's division, the knockouts division, do not last. We get them for a few months. They said this is the longest reigning all women's knockouts tag team champions. I didn't realize they had them that long. Rosemary looked really cool here. I like the spider, by the way, on her on her face paint. But they're just they're just teasing. We're getting Havoc versus Rosemary again. These two have fought 50 million times. Rosemary never beats her. Taya Valkyrie, if you compare what she's doing here compared to her her brief time in AEW right now, her AEW debut, the Rampage match, I was saying on what I recorded for the Patreon, uh, patreon.com backslash BQ Speaks, she she kind of came out like she has a new lease on life. If you see her on AEW television, it is a it is a different level of confidence, of presence, and we haven't seen that version of Taya on our screen in years. She's you know participating in this. It, it it comes off a little like she is going through the motions, you know. And and we like Taya. We glad we're glad they brought her on, but it's just. I think the fan base just wants to see wrestlers start coming in that are going to be committed to the company, committed to their characters. Um, I'm not saying she did bad work. That's definitely not what the hell I'm saying. But, you know, you come in on these short-term deals. You just do whatever the company asks of you. You're not really feeling it. I don't know. But the version you see on AEW television is not what we see on Impact. Uh, and then we get PCO walking through the town again. Eddie. 
do you guys like this stuff with Eddie and PCO? I just I think it's actually kind of well done. This the music sucks ass, but I think it's kind of well done. It looks good, but it, it, this is like the gift that keeps on giving. This feud is never going to end. I feel like they're going to have their match and it's going to continue. It's just it's just going to keep going. Backstage, Mike Bailey, Jonathan Gresham, Community Theater. Jonathan Gresham is a pretty good actor. I just want to see more of him on the screen. I just think there's there's a little more they can do with him. Mike Bailey should never talk ever again. We're 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 get we're just getting to that point of Mike Bailey where it's I don't know if we're getting to a point, but we're just you know you're gonna get these awesome matches, but we're just like almost cringing when we he when he opens his mouth. These Every time he talks, it's it's very, very bad. And I don't know why he is talking. There's some guys you can kind of keep silent. And I, I think he would benefit from that. But they just they just want him to talk. Johnny Swinger takes on Jai Vidal. <laughs> and this was pretty funny. The funniest part was when Swinger's like, you didn't tell me this kid could work. You didn't tell me you could work, Daddy. Dicky Swice, Dicky dies. Like I had no idea. Um, Vidal's pretty good in the ring. He he act, he impressed me. I think he probably impressed you guys as well. He he can definitely uh he can definitely work. And I I don't think we're gonna see him wrestle too terribly often. But I wouldn't be mad if they you know start factoring him into some of these X division matches. Not not feuds, you know. I don't I don't think you can he can feud with anyone, but. When they do these, you know, qualifiers or these multi-person matches, you know, I think they could find a way to get him in there. And I think he would um, do a really good job. I think the company would benefit from it. But uh, I I think he's really good. I I was very impressed. He, he, He wins with a running boot because it's impact. And they don't value finishers. We've we've seen people win with 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 just punching somebody, clotheslining. I mean, God, it <laughs> it drives me crazy. You know, I talk about these finishers every week. More bad backstage with the the design and the music, and they're standing in the interview area. And they made the screens all red so they could look spooky, but they're just in the area that Gia Miller hangs out in. And I said this with Killer Kelly before. The red lights and all that shit would look a lot cooler if everything else wasn't red on this show. So they didn't look that cool to me. Design is starting to wear on me a little bit. I said I was going to let this play out. But it is not clicking. And, uh, you know, Alan Angel is one of my favorite wrestlers. And I just don't like what he's doing. I'm not into the design right now. I, I'm starting to be out on the design. I tried and tried for the longest time to just let it play out. And I am out. I'm out. Uh, then we get PCO arriving on state on on scene. Then Mickey James is concerned at Tommy Dreamer's request for a tag team title match, pitting them against Bully Ray and Masha Slamovich. Um, she is concerned about this match, how it's going to affect them. And Jordan Grace comes down, doubts that Mickey James will be ready for her world title match at Sacrifice. This is unnecessary. Back backstage segment, Tommy Dreamer talking to some Jay Brown backstage, just unnecessary. We didn't need it on the show. Then Eddie Edwards is in the ring, and as much as I talk about Eddie's promos, real mush mouth, real uh, not always real original what he's saying, I thought he did pretty good here. It was a little difficult to command this audience because the, uh, the audience was a little dead for this episode. And you, typically that's because they're doing a lot of television and it's the second half of that 
particular day of recording. Um, I, I, I thought he did okay here. But then PCO comes out. And, uh, you know, and Kenny King, Kenny King showed up. So uh, I think Kenny King is going to do wonders for this because he can do more talking. He can add more charisma. And I, I think uh, he can he can add something that he couldn't add to Honor No More because it was such a big group. Now they seem like they're teaming him up with Eddie again, pairing them together. I think uh, Eddie will benefit from him a lot. But he shows up from behind as PCO comes out. Hits him with a shovel. They, they bring out this shovel every time. It doesn't matter if it's PCO running down, if it's Eddie running down, there's the freaking shovel. So they're going to do some sort of buried alive match. You know, I, I've been saying this. They have to. It makes no sense why they just keep bringing the shovel out. I mean, it makes sense, but it just for it to continue to be on screen. That's how wrestling works. Like, you know, it's like if if a wrestler comes down, starts beating you with a strap all of a sudden, it's because they're going to have a strap match. Um, And then I was bringing up that they just did a match like this in AEW. So, you know, really bad timing impact. But but it just seems like that's what they're doing. This lasted forever. They're trying to take PCO down with the chairs and the shovels and the Boston knee party. And it just lasted forever. This, this was entirely, entirely, entirely too long. Um, but I'm starting to come around on PCO a little bit because of his just commitment to the gimmick. You know, so I, I think I'm going to come around a lot more so on PCO when he's not wrestling Eddie Edwards, because this is going on forever. A lot of people popped for this backstage where um, Santino was talking with Vladimir Kozlov. Uh, so I thought that was pretty cool. It was um, I, I kind of got that tease online first before I watched the episode, and I, I got the impression that he played a bigger role in this segment. He, he was just kind of in and out. This was the one backstage segment that I actually thought was kind of funny because Santino says... Uh, well, Dirty Dango says, that's, you know, Santino's like, uh, we can't say his name. And says his name, Joe Hendry pops out. <laughs> it was done very smooth. But I, I actually thought that was kind of funny. Um, and they're, they're setting up next week. It's going to be Dirty Dango. The, 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 it, it was funny until Dango started kind of like fangirling on Joe Hendry. Like, Dango's probably seen more success in wrestling than Joe Hendry has. So is is uh that that's what I was thinking to myself watching this. Uh, but yeah, so next week we're getting Dirty Dango and Hendry versus Brian Myers and Moose. Joe Hendry versus Moose, dancing Moose. We go out after this, folks. The knockouts tag team championship match. Death Dolls versus the Coven. On the Patreon, I talk about how I would have booked Kalen King. I don't like to do a lot of fantasy booking, but how I would have introduced her into the company, how I would currently be using her. Spoiler alert, it's not with Taylor Wilde forming the Coven. The Coven is going to ruin the Knockouts tag team division, folks. Taylor Wilde is committed to the gimmick, thank God. You should always be committed to the chem the gimmick, but it is so bad. And Kylan King doesn't fit the gimmick. It's like they just threw her into this. So who wants to do this kooky shit with Taylor Wilde? You, you're not doing anything. You're new. Come on. The match was what it was. No one's going to be watching this on replay. But the Coven wins. They're the Knockouts Tag Team Champions. The move that Kylan King used at the end, did this like modified suplex, that isn't, hasn't been her finisher typically. Um, I think Kingdom Falls is what she calls her finisher, which I actually like her finisher. So, of course, that's not what she uses in Impact. Um, so, I don't know if this is what she's doing. She did the John Cena move last week. You know, sack of shit slam. Got over like a fart in church. 
And then she did this uh, suplex, which was um, on Taya Valkyrie. Maybe her normal finisher she can't do on Taya because she's actually <laughs> close to her in height. But this was okay. But if you're going to use... <sighs> like, she hits the move, and 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 um, Tom Hannafin, who, of course, let this know it's the first time ever match, he's just, oh, what a move. Like... If this is her finisher, and if there is a name for it, hit us with it. Introduce with it. Introduce us to it right then and there. Don't hit her with, oh, what a cool move. One, two, three. Let us know what the hell's going on. But the Coven is the tag team champions. And we know that knockouts tag team champions hold the title for quite some time. Because there's no challengers. There's no division. They they create one team. Um, when that team wins a title, they dissolve the other team who lost. And these two will hold the championships forever. I don't know who, who the F they're going to feud with. But I think they're going to hold the titles for a while. And they're going to they're gonna begin the groundwork to like really ruin this division. Because this is not... A gimmick that's getting over. But they're committed to it. Impact's committed to it. We're going to get tarot cards. And, and, and the thing is, they've never explained it. Just, just, I mean, it's, it's past the point now. No one cares. But they didn't ex- really explain what the hell she's, she's doing. And then we get into this main event. It's uh, Rich Swan, Josh Alexander, Frank and Kazarian versus... The bull, 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 Bullet Club. So, a uh, pretty good main event. I was looking forward to seeing some Kenta in the ring. You guys know that I'm always digging Rich Swan. L- let me talk real quick before I get into this match. I watched this episode on my TV for the first time in a long time. I usually watch on my phone. And I don't know if it was Access TV, but the the visual quality of this episode was horrible it was pixelated it was blurry it looked like shit so i don't know if this is just like on access tv how like it was so res- low resolution and and it's already so dark and the colors they use are so so dull like if red is going to be your color like you should have a nice bright red that attracts people but instead they use like the dullest shade possible they use the dullest shade of blue possible you know red and blue are the two most complementary colors in the world and they managed to put it together that it looks so bad and it's just dull and it doesn't it doesn't pop and the reason that's important is when you're if you're not going to do hd if you're going to give us low resolution shit, those colors are going to all start running into each other because with low resolution, they don't support every shade of a color. So if you're low resolution, you have to have the stark reds and, and the stark blues. They have to be, they have to be bright. They have to pop. When they're dull like this, and you have a low resolution, uh, you're, you're not putting it in high definition. It's going to look really bad. And it does. And this looked horrible. I've had many people agree with me on Twitter that it looked bad. And then I've had some say it looked perfectly fine. So that's why I'm thinking the the version uploaded to Impact Plus is okay. I think it's the Access TV version. Or I should say Impact Plus. Impact Plus and Ultimate Insider. The Access TV version. Maybe is maybe the problem. But it looked really bad. It was kind of embarrassing. But this match, this was a good match. Uh, they're wrestling in the dark. They just continue to wrestle in the dark week to week. And um, the, the 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 fan base is begging for improved lighting. Begging. Begging. And we're just not getting it. But it was a very good main event. The, the wrestling on the show... Was good. This was this was definitely a good week of wrestling, but we're just on the downside of the roller coaster. 
where the episodes as a whole just aren't good. And maybe it's just because maybe it seems a lot of time that it's one segment or something lately. That's like really dragging it down. And it's typically having to do with, with Taylor wild or, or the, uh, or the death dolls. That is the low part of the, sh- the low point of the show right now is when they're involved. And I'm, you know, I already mentioned a couple of times doing my impact on pop review. Looking back at Rosemary, I'm like, man, we've, we've come a lot. <laughs> we have, we have come um, a long way with Rosemary in this company. She's been part of it forever, but it is, it is gone downhill. And maybe, maybe it's just character development. Maybe you have to do that. If you're going to be in a company that long. I don't know. Eddie Edwards wrestling has wrestled in this company forever, and it took him like twelve years to change his gimmick. So, I think that original Rosemary probably still could have worked. And they even started going that direction a little bit again when they started turning her heel when she initially teamed with Taya Valkyrie, and then Taya left, and then we went back to this. I've I've already talked enough about. The Death Dolls in the Coven, though, but uh, I just think their segments are drowning, drown, uh, dragging down the show to where the overall show feels like it's not not good. But we're getting stuff like this. We're getting, uh, you know, we knew that the Bullet Club was going to win this one way, shape, or form. But the way they ended this match was absolutely horrible. Steve Macklin is just peeking around the corner watching josh alexander with all everything going on in the ring and you know these wrestlers are tunnel visioned with everything going on in the ring and there's people in the crowd and there's the the impact screensaver and there's so much going on and then steve macklin wearing black hiding in the back in the dark in the shadows all of a sudden catches josh alexander's eye and it throws him off to the point that he can't hit the move he's going for. And it ultimately cost these guys the victory. This was horrible. This was a terrible way of ending what was a really good match with six guys who put on great matches every time they go out there. I don't know what they were thinking with this. The people in the... It, it didn't hit because the people in the audience didn't know what was going on. Tom Hannafin didn't know what was going on. Nobody did. Not a single person in that audience knew what the hell Josh Alexander was looking at. And he just looked weak and it looked ridiculous and it wasn't good. Oh boy. Um, we, we, uh, we got to get back on the ball here, folks. We got to, we got to start getting some better overall episodes. I don't know they're going to go that direction, though. I think we're at a downtime. I think it's going to be like this until Rebellion. And then if Josh Alexander loses, T. Macklin wins. I think we're going to start on the up and up again. Um, If Josh Alexander wins, I think we're going to continue to get not very good television until Slammiversary. And I and I say that because as as Macklin, if he wins, he's a world champion. He's going to um, he's going to add a new energy to the show, being the guy. So I, I've got some concerns, but we are at a downtime. The, these episodes are not doing well. Um, I, I'm sure many of you do enjoy them. There's a lot of people who just they're impact apologists and the, they they like whatever we see on the on TV. If you're one of those people. Tremendous, but um, I don't think right now they're putting their best foot forward. These these backstage things that they do and these interviews are awful. The wrestling is great. The well, excuse me, punch the mic. The wrestling is great. The rest is not. I'm your boy BQ. I apologize again for the late review, and I'm a little tired. So let's get this thing uh, wrapped up, and we'll be back talking sacrifice before you know it. I'm out. Peace.